Before I start making all the molding for this piece, I cut the base for the inside of this cabinet. Now, if you want to make, if you just want to make it a rectangle and not worry about these two wings, you could pretty much cut this whenever you want and slide it in. But I wanted mine to be continuous and go into these two nooks. So I actually ended up having to take off the side panel of the fish tank stand to get it in. So if you want to make yours similar to mine, just make sure you put that base in before you put all your sides on. Now one of the reasons that wasn't a huge deal for me is because my brad nailer punched out a couple holes in this side panel so I was replacing it anyways. So I had this half inch plywood of the same type as the fish stand and I basically just cut out those corners which were three by three as well as the middle piece. I also, and you'll see where I put it in there, left a substantial amount at the front and that's because the doors in here are going to be partial overlay so they'll be inset a little bit and you don't want them to hit this base. So a little fish tank PSA, I ended up taking apart my stand completely because I didn't heed my own advice and I was waiting for I was waiting for um, confirmation from a couple things from the customer and the tank stand sat for about a week and when I came back it was no longer square. Um, you could kind of see from one of those long 2x4s the gap that ended up happening at the top and the bottom. So it's sitting square on the corners but then gapping so it's bowing this way and also these twisted so the whole thing was out of square. I think maybe these 2x4s were mislabeled in the store and they weren't kiln dried and they weren't completely dry so they warp because I've never really had a, a problem with a stand like that uh, warping so substantially. So in order to fix this and kind of use what I had on hand, I'm going to laminate some pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood that I cut into 3 inch strip. So then with these chunks of plywood, I can remake those sides. The smaller cross members aren't going to be a problem. They're so small that they're, they're not warping as much, but I have to replace those longer runs. And the nice thing about plywood is it's much more stable than 2x4s because they laminate these sheets together perpendicularly and it makes it much more stable and it doesn't warp or bend nearly as much. So even though it's never fun to have to rebuild stuff, this was a fairly easy fix. I had this apart and back together in less than an hour and it was totally worth it because now it doesn't rock at all. If you actually have the tools to rip down plywood, um, it's easiest on a table saw. You can use a circular saw but you have to set up a jig to do it and sometimes even with that it's not super accurate. I would recommend using this plywood. I even had enough to do these ends too instead of 2x4s. It's just so much straighter and you don't have to worry about it bowing and twisting. It just made putting this together much easier even than the original 2x4 build. I mean, the plywood's going to probably be a little bit more expensive than the 2x4s, but I think it's worth it, especially if you're somewhat new at building stuff. You won't have to wrestle with those 2x4s. If you have to use 2x4s, I definitely recommend that you spend the time looking for a higher grade kiln drying 2x4 so you don't have the bowing problem I did. So now that this is pretty much back together, um, I was able to just pop those side panels off so I could put those back on and then I'll be back at where I was about an hour ago. The only other difference between this um, and the other one was 
these together is a little bit thinner than those original two by fours, so I have a little bit of a lip here. Go through and add just a couple strips of this along the edges so that I have an even plane to attach that surface. Now, if you're starting this from scratch and you decide to go with this plywood, you just wouldn't cut your laps as thick as I did mine, and then you won't have to add this step in. Now that I have that cabinet back together, I could start making the trim. And for the trim, this whole cabinet is being made out of birch. So I actually ordered this online because you can't get this at um, the hardware stores around here. I get this stuff from Woodworker Source when I'm ordering it online because shipping is pretty cheap. And it comes pretty much ready to use. Um, since this is just going to be trim, I'm not going to bother replaning this. They surface two sides. And I have one edge ripped so I could um, rip stuff on my table saw. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the profile bit in my router and start routing these edges and then ripping off the strip sizes I need to start making this molding. Um, the profile for this is really simple from the photo the customer sent me. It's just going to be a round over. So I'm going to start round overing these edges and then ripping them into strips. So I ended up making four of these pieces of molding and I'm going to use one, uh, two for the bottom and two for the top, but the top's going to be a little bit different. So if you don't want to custom make your molding, I mean honestly the only reason I'm custom making this molding is because it has to be made of birch. You can finish this off with pre-made molding in the store. If you're painting it, you could even get pre-made, pre-primed molding and save yourself a lot of time. The assembly will be the same whether you make it or buy it. This was four quarter lumber and it was 10 board feet and they sell it in a pack. And it came well enough for me that I didn't have to do a ton of um, planning or anything with it. I'm pretty much using it straight out of the package and I'm leaving it the thickness it is. So this molding is going to be a little chunky. Right now it's at about three quarters, whereas if you get the molding from the store, it's usually I think like five eighths of an inch. So now what I'm going to do is for the two sides, I'm going to cut two pieces and put a 45 on either end so that I could use them to test the front fit. Now that I have my two sides rough cut and I left them a little long so I could trim them afterwards, I could trim off the edge of one of the longer pieces and then measure to cut this last miter. So with that corner lined up, I could then come over to this side and with my square mark where this angle should be on this side. For the top part, I'm going to be using the same sort of molding, but I'm going to want it to overlap this, the thickness of my sheathing. And that's because I made this frame to fit the tank, and then I had that gap because I had to remake it and I put those shims in there. So in order to get this so it's the same um, width that I want, I'm going to be cutting some grooves in the back of my molding so that it actually sits on top of this tank. So in order to do that, I put a dado stack in here and I'm trimming off about 3 16ths of an inch. So I put my fence to cut that groove just below that molding detail and I'm going to send all my pieces through. So after cutting this molding, that's what you're left with, and then I cut a 45 on the two end pieces, as well as the 45 in the front of this one, and you can see how they join, as well as to sit on the lip of that cabinet. So now that I have this on there and that side, I could just measure and cut this one, and then I can start putting all this molding together.
This is that cabinet as it stands right now, and I propped it up in the back of my shop and spent some time leveling it so that when I start attaching all this molding, it will go on level so that when I move it to the new space, if there's any differences in the level surface from my shop to the new space, it would show in um, the base molding. So I made sure to put it on a very level surface before I attach all that. And yesterday I spent the day making these partial inset or partial overlay doors. And I posted a separate video of that just because it would make this video super long if I showed how I made those as well. So now I'm finally going to attach this molding I made to the base and to the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put biscuits in all my corners first and then glue it to the surface. And then I'm pretty sure I'm going to try and get in place with some clamps. I don't want to put a ton of hardware in the front of this because no matter what sort of putty you use, since this is going to be stained, the putty never takes the stain super well. So I'm going to try and attach it with just um, some biscuits and glue for now. And then once it's dry, I could try putting some screws in from the backside into the molding. So shy of a lot of sanding, which I'm going to do before the coat of stain goes on this. Um, as of right now, the last thing I'm going to add is going to be some corner trim on the co front corners as well as the back corners of this cabinet. And then I'm going to cut these pieces I left long to be flush with that. Um, originally I was thinking of maybe leaving those out, but as soon as I had to take these apart and rebuild, the corners got a little messed up, so it was just easiest to decide to cover them. But if you build this with those miters the first time around and get good joints, you can avoid this last step. So I'm just going to take some of this leftover birch I have and cut it into an L shape on my table saw and start attaching that with glue and probably some brads. So with some leftover scrap, I ripped two three quarter inch square pieces and then I raised my blade to 9 16 of an inch and set my fence to 9 16 of an inch and I'm going to cut out a little chunk of this and then use it for the corner molding. This is the cabinet before stain, and actually those partial hinges are going to be replaced with brass hinges, but they were out of stock at my store, so I just used some dummy hinges until 
I got those. One thing I haven't done, which I'm going to ask the customer, is if they want something, a thin piece of plywood on the top there. I didn't put anything there because this is pretty sturdy. It's not going to add a lot of structure. It's not going to add a lot of needed structure to the piece. And once you put the tank on there, you're obviously going to be putting rocks and whatnot in the tank, and you're never going to see that anyway. But I'm going to email him and see if he wants something put in there. For the finish on this, the customer wanted to keep that kind of stark, almost white look to the birch. You could tell the difference between the birch veneer in this video and the, tr and the actual hardwood trim is a little bit darker. It almost looks kind of pink. And obviously that is something you can't avoid. If you go and buy two pieces of lumber, that doesn't mean, at the same time from the same store, that doesn't mean they're going to stay in the same or look the same once they're assembled. So he wants this to stay kind of this whitish color so I'm going to be putting a white stain over this entire cabinet and then wiping it off really quickly it's almost going to be like a wash and that white stain it almost it, I've already tested it out on a piece of wood so this is that white stain and then it's going to get a clear satin coat on top of it there's that white stain with the clear coat this is the blank it almost has a yellow look to it and then this is just the clear coat and you could see that even though the clear coat is going to be water-based that it does yellow the wood a little bit so i'm going to be putting that white stain on there just to keep the natural look of the wood and then clear coating it i didn't get crazy with veneering a lot of the pieces on the inside of the cabinet you would have to get a lot of veneer to cover up all of these pieces and you're only ever going to see them when you go into the cabinet. Same thing for the back. I didn't even end up covering this 2x4. And I kind of just put these little pieces where there was gaps with the veneer. And I'm not covering up the top either. It's just added effort for something. When this is up against the wall and there's a 400 pound fish tank on it, you're not going to be moving it and you're never going to see it. 